Hi, Peter Charles here of Hooked for Life Fly Fishing. And in this video, actually be next three videos, we're going to look at uh, streamers by species. I'm going to start off with brown trout and the type of uh, flies I use for brown trout. The next video will combine uh, brook trout and rainbow trout together because they basically hit a lot of the same stuff and live in similar waters. And uh, the last one will be on smallmouth bass. So let's look at brown trout today. And I think one of the things to keep in mind with brown trout is they're highly cannibalistic. cannibalistic. There we go. And so any fly that looks like a little brown trout is going to get eaten by a bigger brown trout. And secondly, uh, when, you know, we hear, read a lot of the stuff about brown trout feeding habits, they talk about smaller browns eating insects and moving to uh, minnows and other brown trout and, you know, other fish and crayfish and all that sort of stuff when they get bigger. However, uh, that's only a general rule. Uh, I've caught a brown trout that was about ooh, ooh, that long, roughly, on a dry fly. This brown trout hit my dry, dry fly while it still had the tail of another smaller brown trout coming out of its mouth. So you've got a six inch brown trout eating a three inch brown trout, then trying to eat my dry. And the greedy little so-and-so lost the, his prize when he went to, when I landed him. So uh, it wasn't a good deal for him. But the point is a six inch brown ate a three inch brown. So you have to keep in mind that some of these uh, column rules that we read about or hear about uh, you know, smaller insects, bigger onto minnows. That's just a generalization. Big browns will take insects and little browns will eat minnows or other smaller browns. So a lot of what the recommendations are for brown trout are, you know, circling around brown and white, olive and white. Um, very sort of imitative colors, which is not to say you can't get them on an attractor. You most certainly can. But when we think of the water that brown trout live in, it's uh, not as fast as brook trout and uh, rainbow trout. They're a bit more tolerant of slower water, lower oxygen conditions, a little uh, higher temperatures, uh, especially versus brook trout. So you're fishing for them sometimes in slower water. And I do realize brook trout and rainbow trout can live in lakes. Um, but you're fishing them generally, when we're talking about rivers, generally in slower water, more in the margins, less in the main flows. Uh, and so that has an impact on design. Uh, you, you know, you've got to think about fish, uh, fishing for them where you're moving the fly and not allowing the current to move the fly as much. So looking at the sample I have here, this is just some of them. And I'll use this as a pointer. Of course, my brown trout weemer, it was designed because brown trout are cannibalistic, cannibalistic. I'll get it out one of these days. Uh, and so as a consequence, I created a fly that looked like a little brown trout, and it works like a charm. Uh, also, don't be afraid to use little tiny patterns. This is my mini brown. I've also got a mini brookie and a mini bow that does the same thing. Very tiny streamers, very effective for smaller fish, also effective in high pressured situations where they've seen a lot of big flies and they're not moving to them anymore, but you put it on a little one by them and they'll grab it. So that's often effective when you're dealing with highly pressured fish. Uh, when you're looking at some of these others, you see that they're fairly simple patterns. We've got, uh, you know, simply dark over white and use of yellow with a bit of red, yellow with a bit of red or gold, gold and white. This is a little brown trout streamer, famous little brown trout streamer. So when you're looking at these things, some of the things to keep in mind is sim fairly simple imitative patterns, brown over white always works. Add some yellow, add some red, add some gold. These things are right in a brown trout's wheelhouse. And if you look at a small brown, what do you got on there? You got a bit of red, you got a bit of gold, you got a bit of yellow, you know, you've got all those colors in there. So you add those colors into your flies. I mean, they're, they're going to work. You're going to pick up brown trout on them. So this is kind of like the mix I would use. And the primary ones that I would actually use on a daily basis would be these. The little brown trout 
that was my first brown trout streamer that I used religiously and I caught a load of fish and it was basically I was given two flies and uh, I worked those two flies until they were trashed and I caught dozens and dozens and dozens of browns on those trout flies until they were garbage uh, and um, you know it proved to me that that basic color st scheme of brown over over white is uh, is what what they love they will also in my local river they will also go for a perch pattern and that's because it's a tailwater fishery, and when there's a high water event and they open the, the gates up on the dam, it blows a lot of small perch out of the lake into the river, and then the, the browns go nuts on these little perch. So it doesn't hurt to have a perch pattern as well in, in, in your box. Now, there's also other things to consider, not just um, your standard uh, streamers. My local river is in the brown trout section has got tons of crayfish. Uh, so take a look at them, look at the colors, look at the size. They're, they like the small ones. And oh yeah, you fish a crayfish for them. Also the, also the famous white woolly bugger here. It's, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, brown trout fishermen swear by white woolly buggers. You can use olive as well. Uh, I think I got some olive ones around here somewhere. Yeah. You can use an olive one, something like this. This one's a bit ragged. It's been fished a lot. But, you know, you can, uh, something else you can do too, this, use this jig hook. If you put some lead at the front uh, and then just tie a woolly bugger on that hook, it will fish like a crayfish. So in other words, you bring it along the bottom with the jigging motion, it will go down into the, into the rocks like that with the tail up in the air, like uh, when uh, crayfish back up into a spot. They, they flare their, uh, their claws as a, as a protective gesture. And that's what it looks like. And you'll get that motion from the tail of the woolly bugger. So that's a good little trick if you want to fish a jigging motion over the bottom uh, with a woolly bugger. It's just tie it on a jig hook and put some lead in there. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about for, um, you know, the types of flies I would use. There are other patterns that work depending on the river that you fish most often because different prey species will affect the uh, type of fly you're using so pay attention to what's in the water we've talked about that already you know take a look at the type of minnows the bait fish uh you know are there a lot of other species in there or just a few you have a lot of crayfish or very few what's the predominant species because that's what's going to be preyed upon you know, if there's thousands of crayfish all over the place, well, you can be sure the browns are whacking those crayfish. So pay attention to your local river. But as I say, brown over white, white, olive, you know, these are colors that have just worked. Put some yellow, put some red in there, put some gold in there. And people have caught brown trout on those color schemes for years. So give that a try. Cheers.